Please forgive the... Oh, it stopped. No, nope, there it is. The noise. The soundtrack of my neighborhood, which is lawn care devices and M1 Abrams tanks rolling down the, the drive and UPS trucks and trucks. It's, it's the loudest subdivision in America. You all know that. If you, if you don't know that, it means you're new to the channel. Welcome. Hit the subscribe and the like if you don't mind. We're going to do some pretty awesome stuff today. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, as I've been told to do many times by both supportive people and total jerks in the comment section. But today, we're getting into the motor. We're going to do stage two for the first time ever. So stick around. see myself not that I want to but you heard right um, I have been challenged many many times to go further do more learn more all that sort of stuff which is something I love to do we built a chopper on this channel we've done a million things to baggers but I've done that a billion times that's nothing new and special we built a cholo we are taking a dyna and putting a fairing on it waiting on one little part and then we'll finish that but today I've decided to go ahead and go all in in my from my estimation and that is doing a stage two to a Milwaukee 8 motor I have behind me a 2023 Rogue Glide ST that is a 117 motor. And it comes, there's, there's controversy out there, but it comes with, I think, Harley's torque cam or something like that already in the motor. But you know, there's way more aggressive stuff out there with much better lift and duration that's going to get you more power, more hearse powers, as they say in Donut. And I wanted to do that for a while. I typically let the professionals do stuff that involves inside the motor stuff, camshafts, you know, if you're doing a displacement upgrade or something like that. I do tuning, I do air, I do basic auto tuning, come on. I do exhausts, I do air cleaners, I do body stuff, I do wire, some wiring, lighting, done gauges, stereo stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff, all the bolt-on stuff. I've never gone into the motor before. Today's that day. What we're gonna do to that 2023 Rogue Glide ST is we're gonna put in a Zippers Redshift 472 cam, a pretty aggressive cam that's a really nice match for a 117. We're not gonna do, I don't think so anyway, we're not gonna do any displacement increases, we're not doing a 131 kit, we're not doing that stuff, to this bike. This bike, side note, <clears throat> maybe one of the reasons why I'm okay getting into it, is it really mine? It's owned by Ed Van Black. Ed Van Black. Ed, Ed Van Black. I don't know. It's it's everyone pronounces it differently but they're my buddies who make the color match parts for your you know your fairing your stretched bags your custom paint all that sort of stuff they do all that stuff this is their bike we're building a performance bagger out of it and what i've done so far is curb and ferber uh, a little bit little bits dash hand guards heat guards for your inner leg parts uh, i put bars on it i put a tuner on it i put exhaust on it uh, the Paul from Fairing Exchange did a whole bunch of stuff. He did all the lighting because I was there in Leesburg, and so he just tore into it. I put a Clockworks windshield on it. You know, that kind of stuff. Nothing major. What we're going to do is that Zipper's Redshift cam today. I have watched every video on this install, and it wasn't until last night. You can always learn something. Every video's got a step that maybe somebody else didn't cover so well, or maybe they didn't put it in moron's terms, right? So my favorite one, I'll put links to all these in the description if you want to do this yourself. Because uh, the biggest cost for your stage two, depending on where you go, um, is labor, typically. It's expensive. You're paying a dealer 120 independent shop 100 you know, something dollars an hour. Uh, it's not a very, really super fast install. Plus, they typically go by a book of hours, even if they can do it faster. So if they can knock it out in four hours, they're still going to charge to seven, you know, something like that. It just depends on where you go. Um, so that can be very expensive. Camshafts themselves... 300, 400, you know, something dollars. It's not a super expensive part. But you can't just take the can. Well, you guess you can. You just shouldn't, right? Your minimum process for doing a stage two in a motorcycle is the camshaft itself, <clears throat> the main cam bearing, and push rods. All right, that's the, that's the basic, and some gaskets. Basic, basic job is that. Why? Because unless you're taking the, the, uh, the rockers off and the, valve, the heads off and all that sort of stuff, you're cutting the push rods. We'll do this. We'll do it all together here in a little bit. But you cut the stock fixed push rods and you put adjustable ones in later. Again, you'll see this later to pick to take up the slack and make that work. So your minimum is your push rods, your cam bearing, and your cam. If you go further, it's slightly more involved, not much. You can actually change out the oil pump because that's in there, and the cam plate to go with better tolerances, better quality. Uh, the oil pumps typically pump more, more velocity, that sort of stuff if you go aftermarket. The, the verdict is out on this. 
Let me know down below in your comments and your thoughts. But a whole lot of super knowledgeable people have told me that if your bike is newer, if you're talking 17, like first gen, first fresh out 107 Milwaukee 8, I'd do an oil pump because the oil pumps were inferior back then. But as of like 20, I guess it was, I'm not sure what the latest version is, but this is a 2023 bike. It has the latest version of Harley Davidson's oil pump, which has actually been proven to be pretty damn good. Now Harley sells a Screaming Eagle version, which a little more oil pressure, et cetera, et cetera, and it's prettier. But you know, there's a lot of argument as to whether it's necessary. I do possess a Screaming Eagle cam plate and oil pump. And still I have good friends who get into their motors are going, nah, put the stalker back in. Like it's good stuff. It's already proven. You know it's fine. It's been in the bike. Just put it back in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what way I'm gonna go, to be honest. I don't know if I'm gonna go ahead and change out the plate and pump or just use the stalker. My mood at the time will dictate whether or not I do that. We'll see. But so again, zippers red chef 472 we're doing. We are doing the main cam bearing. We're gonna do the adjustable push rods. Uh, and I did, of course, order this. This is something that like, why not? It's, I think I paid a hundred bucks for these. Got them on desk, Kirk. Um, tappet cuffs. Your factory tappet cuffs uh, in a Milwaukee A are plastic. And you'll see those later. And that just, why have plastic when you can have metal? I know why Harley did it. You know, there's always, they're trying to work, manage cost. And I did see a great video last night, the last one that had something new in it, where they had actually said that they do it, they do the switch, they put the SNS, you know, um, machine tappet cups in, but they've never, never actually seen failed plastic ones. So, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'd do it. I think, again, I think I paid $95 or a hundred bucks or something for those. So, I mean, if you're super, super tight on money, then don't, but I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? So, we're gonna do the tappet cups. And then we'll see about the oil pump. I still got to get some of my tools out and get set up. We got a couple steps to this. I'll show you real quick. So I already taken the bag off, but uh, I have to take the, well, everyone has to <laughs> take the exhaust off. So this Vance and Hines stainless two into one RR pipe is going to involve getting that spring, those two springs off. I have the hook for it in the bag over there. And then it's a matter of just two, I think those are half inch bolts back here. And then the final volume just slides off. And then those two uh, are not connected, those head pipes. So then it's just the half inch flange bolts, unplug the O2 sensors, uh, take off the floorboard, got to do that. Uh, and then those will come away. And then I've got the cam chest all, you know, right there in front of me. And I'll take the air cleaner off as well, of course. Uh, and then it's a matter of rubber bands and paper clips to hold up these, the cam tubes. You're going to pop these out first. I'm going to hold those up with uh, paper clips and rubber bands. And then we'll get in there with bolt cutters and actually, no, I'm sorry. We'll lift the bike. Uh, and then when those are up, you'll be able to see when the, the push rods are at the bottom. That was a question I had that I think I overthought and I'll share basically what I, the conclusion I've arrived at, but I want to hear what you have to say. So I've seen in lots of videos, perhaps them over explaining the situation with the push rods. Um, you got a picture that in your cam chest, the camshaft is in there with lobes on it, okay? The lobe is the risen part of the camshaft. If you know this, then you're gonna be like, this guy's an idiot. And I actually do kind of know what I'm talking about in this one because I used to work on old cars. The lift is how high the lobe is. The duration is how wide it is. So basically, as it pushes your push rod up and opens the exhaust or, or intake or exhaust valves, it's how far does it open it and how long does it stay open is dictated by the rotation of the camshaft, all right? So to be EPA compliant, and honestly, there is a bit of a long, long distance longevity thing, a reason why you would put a more subdued cam in a motor. So an OEM manufacturer is going to always put one in that's going to be a long life cam. It's not putting a lot of stress on the, on the, the valve springs, all that sort of stuff. What we're doing is putting one in that's got a lot more ass to it, more lift and more duration. So you're going to get more fuel. You know, it, it it's going to be way better, bigger bang, more powers, that sort of stuff. So, um, Essentially, the videos I saw that I thought were over explaining it, they're trying to walk through the steps of suck, squeeze, bang, blow while showing the push rod go up and down. And really, all you have to know is that you want the valve completely closed. You want no pressure on the spring. So what that means is as we turn the wheel, we'll do this. We're going to lift the bike, put the bike in sixth gear, start turning the wheel. When you see the push rod go all the way down, right, as soon as it starts going back up, 
pull the wheel back so it's back down. When it's all the way down, there's no pressure on the valve spring. That's when you cut it. You just don't want to cut it when the valve spring's you know, compressed because then you've got that sucker shooting out. You can get hurt. You can damage your motor, that sort of stuff. You could damage the valve from it slamming shut like that. So uh, that's what we're doing. Essentially, all you're doing is turn that wheel until each push rod is all the way down. As soon as you see it start to go back up, push the wheel back so it goes back down so you know there's no pressure and then snippy snippy. That's what we're doing. It's not that complicated, but I've heard and seen several videos really over -ex explain that, in my opinion. So that's what we're doing. Um, let me get the rest of the tools. I'm gonna plug in my speaker out here. I've got my Tab Performance Made Power Box Power Station out here because when I work on bikes, that's, that's, it's a plug for them. They're my friends at Tab and they own this company, Power Box. I don't bother with extension cords. And someone even said, well, drop a, a retractable line from your ceiling. I only have one plug where my garage door opener is. So that box sits right next to me. I've got two 120 volts, four USBs, and it'll last me all day. So I have to use a soldering iron for something really interesting. I'll show you that later. Uh, I've got to use, I'm charge my phone, run my Bluetooth speaker, all that sort of stuff, and I'm gonna have juice right next to me. So let me grab the rest of the tools, we'll be back in a minute. All right, things have happened. Um, nothing bad. Some of you are hoping for something bad, and it's not nice, but it's, it's fine. What I did was I got the bike prepared the same way you'll have to prepare yours, which is varying by exhaust and stuff, so I didn't show that. So what I did is I took off the exhaust and the left bag and the side cover you have to to get the O2 sensors unplugged, and the right floorboard so that essentially the cam chest is bare, right? Because your pipes are gonna be different, and if you know how to take your pipes off, that could be a different thing. This is a two into one shorty. It goes on differently, so I'm not gonna show all that stuff. Anyway, so that's done. And then one thing I had forgotten, put the bike in six gear. So if you don't have to do that without, without it running, yeah, put it in second, that's easy. Let the clutch out, grab the back tire, click it into gear, shift it to third, click, shift it to fourth, click. Every time you shift the gear, you're gonna have to grab the back wheel and have it click into the gear. And that way you'll get into six, at least on this 23. I've had other bikes where you just go rattle up to six and no, no problem. But this one, I had to actually grab the tire and let it settle in the gear before I could do it. Uh, the other thing is you need to take spark plugs out, or at least two of the four. This is a Milwaukee 8, so there's four spark plugs. Um, I took the two that are easy to get to here under the tank. I'll show you. This is just for your sanity. So I took those two spark plugs out so that I can turn the motor over easily with the tire. If you take the spark plugs out, you open the cylinder up and there's just less compression. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier to grab that tire and turn it over. Especially on like a 117. I don't know what you're running, but on this motor, I tried before I turned, it really didn't want to do it very easily. So I took those spark plugs out and now it's at least manageable. Because you have to do that to get the push rods where you want them before you cut them. So that's the next step. All right, if you watch these videos before, you'll know what the next step is, but real quickly, I'm gonna take a screwdriver and pop those collars out, all four of them. Right? Then I'm gonna slide the tube up. I'm gonna use a paper clip bent to make a, you'll see, but like a hook that'll go inside these tubes, both of them, and hold them up, and then run the rubber band up over this bolt here, and that'll just hold those tubes out of the way. Then we're gonna turn the wheel. I'm gonna do that on all four. Camera's doing goofy shit, all four. Uh, and then I'm gonna turn the wheel until I see that it's all the way down. And I'll try and show that, but I don't have enough hands, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. But I'm going to turn the wheel until you see this go all the way down. And then if I keep going, it'll go back up. So then you go back until it's all the way down. You know what I mean? Like, as you roll the motor over, you want to make sure this is all the way down, because that takes all the pressure off the valve spring. You listen to me talking like an expert. I've never done, the, never done this before, but I can do it, I'm sure. Um, then I'll cut that, do the same for that one, that one, that one, and that one. Just make sure there's no pressure on the valve train when you do it. After we have cut those out, we'll then pull the O-rings out of the tappet covers. We'll take the top of covers off, which can be a pain. You need an old school, what I've seen in videos, an old school uh, hex head key. Maybe even grind it down on the L side to get down in there, because this is not real easy to get to. I checked and mine looks like it's gonna go. I have an old Craftsman that I may have actually already cut down because it seems a little short. What the hell did I do with it though? <sighs> Another thing to find, but uh, you're going to take these eight bolts out, take that tappet cover off. That will then expose the plastic tappet cuffs that we're replacing with these. Uh, and then I may even consult a video, see what the be next best step is. But after that's done, 
these are 3 16 bolts. We'll take all these out, give a little tap with a dead blow to break it loose. I saw one video that said leave that one in there. Just, I mean, loose, but in there just to hold it in place while you give it a little tappy. That'll break the uh, gasket loose. Drain the earl in there. There will be a quart of oil or so down in there. Uh, and then, next step's gonna be taking the cam chain off, which you need a tensioner or a block for that. I've seen it done without, but I'm not about to do it. I've seen mechanics that have done this a million times actually use a impact I, I i just for taking it off and i'm not gonna do that i just don't have the guts and now i can't find my little tool it's sitting here somewhere but i actually bought uh online this little plastic tool with jagged teeth in it that you stick between the 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 the, uh, the gears to hold it still so you can back the bolts off so uh let me get those tied up show you what i meant by that and then maybe try and do the camera i can show you what i'm talking i don't think so because i don't have hands and i don't have assistance so uh i'll be back all right so paper clip bent up slid up inside the tubes rubber van on the rocker cover bolts so now i can actually see the push rods here this motor is very fresh i think it's got 15 2000 i don't know something like that on it so it was actually funny i had to twist these to get them to come loose so it's not like <laughs> they're not real floppy you know what i mean like but anyway they'll be held up now and if i can i don't know if i've got enough like I can put enough on the wheel. It's really tight. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this with one hand. I'm trying to turn the back wheel while in gear to show the motor rotate and I can't, can't do it. So uh, <laughs> at least out of this angle. So you're gonna have to trust me. What I'm gonna do is turn the wheel until this guy is all the way down. Like you'll see as you turn the wheel, these go up and down. And when they go up, they're opening the they're pushing up on the on the valve spring, opens the valve, all that stuff. So as you turn the wheel and it comes down all the way, and then you keep going, you'll see it go back up. You back it up so that it's all the way down, and then snip it off with a bolt cover, cutter. Same thing with these four, and then we'll be to the next step. So you're just gonna have to trust me. I'm sorry, but I can't. I don't have the stuff to do that. All right, I got it. I got to where I need to be. So if I rock this back and forth, see how that moved up? Did you see that? See, it's right on the bottom lobe now. So I can cut that now, and there's no tension on that on that push rod. So if that made any sense. All right, now we can do it. All right, first one's cut. See there. Oh, there you go. Whoop. So I've successfully made this motor completely screwed now until I put it back together. So the first one's cut. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there because it's out of the way. I'll leave the tube there anyway because I'm still holding that one up, but. Now I'm gonna shove the rag back there, just trying to avoid my bolt cutters like nicking something. So I'll shove that back in there. We'll make sure this is all the way down and then we'll cut that one. All right, progress has been made. So cut all those out. Actually, something I hadn't seen in the videos though, the O-rings that go on the top of the pushrod tube, on two of them it came out with it. So I don't believe it comes with new O-rings for that. So just gotta be aware of that. Um, of course there is, otherwise oil would be coming out everywhere, but there's O-rings up in here. Just notice on these two it stayed up in there, on these two it fell out. So just be aware that you need these. Uh, I've got them here, and, and I even started to you know, tuck them back in, but it fell back out. So it might be something that'd be easier to just, yeah, see, well, maybe it's staying now. But just be aware of that. If these O-rings come out, they gotta go back in. So, you know, something to be aware of. now. The biggest pain in the rear, hands down, so far has been getting the tappet cut, uh, tappet cover bolts out. These eight three sixteenths bolts. So this one's easy, and this one's fairly easy, and that one's fairly easy, and that one's fairly easy, and that one you can start. But all these three back ones, you got to use an old school uh, Allen key, and it just takes freaking forever. So uh, cutting the uh, push rods really wasn't that bad. It wasn't that intimidating once you see. For yourself all right well there's no pressure on it click no problem same thing nothing shot nothing jumped uh again be aware of those o-rings uh, and then from there that's not that scary these are the tappet cuff tappet cuffs are made of plastic it is hard stuff but if you're in there why not replace plastic with metal you know for a hundred dollars but that's up to you now i'm going to take these out actually i already started to before i forgot to record these are all 3 16 bolts i'm going to leave that one loose Give it a little tap to break the gasket free, drain the oil, take that off, and then we'll be looking at the cam chest. I keep getting excited. 
<laughs> so this is one of the little tools you need. These are really cheap, but it's a basically a little resin block that holds the sprockets in place. So you can knock off these these two bolts. Again, I've seen dudes in videos use impacts, but those are pro mechanics, and I just I'm, everything I'm doing is hand tools. I'm not doing anything, you know powered except for like some bolts on the exhaust and stuff that i know but these guys on this stuff i'm not you know not cranking on it with a power ratchet or anything so that's 9 16 and that's a one half i think can't remember and then these bolts here could be a concern first thing you have to do is take off the cam chain tensioner sorry that's like a t30 i think two bolts so take that off first uh did that and then um one thing to be aware of that i saw in videos and i, I haven't I don't have the right socket. I gotta grab it real quick. These are three eighths. These I've seen in videos can break this bolt. You can snap it off. So one of the sort of uh, cheats I saw was using a soldering iron to just touch it and heat that bolt up. You gotta be aware though, you don't want anything to ignite because I'm pretty sure motor oil burns. So you don't want to like, you know, but, uh, I'm going to go grab the 3 8 socket and just give it a little bit and see if that will come loose. Um, if not, then I'll heat them up, but that's something to be aware of is these guys can snap off. I've seen only in one video, but they said they've had multiple customers come in with that, so I'm going to go grab that. Then we'll get in here. So two things. <laughs> Lots of things. There's two things I forgot, though. A, I forgot to thank Tab because they actually provided this cam chest kit a long time ago. So they sent me the... SNS quickie push rods, the fueling tappets, um, the camshaft itself, etc. I bought the SNS, you know, uh, tappet cuffs, but they sent the basic stage two a long time ago and it's been sitting there. So I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it was always intended for this bike, but it's just been sitting there and I hadn't gotten around to it. Um, so thanks to be interested tab for sending that. Uh, second thing, um, this is not a how to video. Right? I'm going to put links in the description for videos that I consider how-tos. This video is intended for my whole freaking purpose in life, and that is to get people working on their bikes, to show that I've never done this before. I, I had a 69 Chevelle in high school, so getting my hands dirty on a car was not new. Did that quite a bit. Uh, did a lot of accessorizing and tear down stuff on my dad's Sportster when I was a kid. Never got into the motor. So uh, this is the farthest I've gone into an engine and I'm documenting it to show you, so far we got no problems, right? Yeah, so we'll stick with that. Let me show you where I am, which is fairly far. So I really, <laughs> something fell. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just, just, just this. I'm sure it's not important. It was sitting right there. So, um, yeah, I know where that goes. So let me actually put that with the sprocket i kept actually the sprockets and chain together so that goes on the inside of that so that's sitting there um i got oil all over myself all right so what i did was i left the bolts that hold the oil pump to the plate in okay and just took the perimeter bolts out so again we cut the push rods we take off the tappet covers uh take off the tappet cuffs right there and then those just pull out. They're just sitting in there. So you just, you know, wrestle those up. Got to dry them off with a rag so you can get your hands on them. Uh, and then when that's done, uh, use that resin block to hold the chain in place. Half inch bolt in the bottom, 9 16 bolt in the top. Uh, pull the chain off. I left it sitting together in the same spot. It's not important to do that, but I did. Uh, and then literally just hook your finger, your finger behind there and pull and it just, and let's go. So I have, and behind here, you can see the camshaft sitting back there. Uh, and the pump is still attached to the plate. So now what I'm going to do is grab right chair, and there you go. So that's the entire assembly together. Oh, the O-ring came off with it. So you're going to be changing two O-rings. Um, that one there gets stuck on the pump, and then this black one right there becomes these gasket kits and stuff come with all this stuff. All right? So we're going to set this down, okay? And then the cam is just sitting right so there is your camshaft out of a 117 motor same one that's in the cbo's and the st so there's that i'm just going to set that aside we're not going to reuse that uh, it's not and and someone's going to ask for it i'll tell you it's not a worthwhile upgrade whatever cam that is it's not worth pulling your motor apart if you're going to pull your motor apart and change a cam then i would actually i mean if you want to keep your warranty then yeah have the dealer do harley stuff but otherwise i mean 
SNS 475. This is the Zippers 472. There's also a 465. You want something more mild. Fueling makes a good cam. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. To plug tab, I love them to death, so I'm going to, you can do an entire stage two off their website. Everything you need. So they will sell you, and if you're going to reuse a stock you know, plate and pump, they will sell you push rods. They'll sell you um, the tappets. It's all a kit. You buy it all in one. Uh, camshaft, everything. Everything you need, with the exception of those tappet cuffs. If you want to do that, you buy those separately. Uh, and then they'll also tell, sell you a power vision. I got mine from from uh, uh, the hell, Dino Jet. But they'll sell you a power vision. They'll sell you the exhaust. They'll sell you everything. So you buy a head pipe, muffler, stage two tuner, everything you want to go stage two. Look at you fluttering around my little cloth here, um, and uh, to go stage two off their website. Now, next step is pulling this bearing right here. So there's two specialty tools you need for this gig. Three, actually, if you don't have them. You need a set of feeler gauges because we're going to check that depth to make sure those those sprockets are sitting, you know, flat against each other so they're not, there's no variation. Uh, you need that resin block to hold the chain in place, you know, while you take those bolts out. Uh, and you need a bearing puller that's made for this. Right here, just bought one. Essentially, um, why is the VA calling me? Probably the wrong number. Hang on. False alarm. The old man's okay. <laughs> He just, he just left my number instead of his when he called to set an appointment. Um, VA in, in Broward County, Palm Beach, pretty damn good. Like, just, I don't know why I'm mentioning that, but my father's a disabled vet, two tours in Vietnam, Purple Heart, all that stuff. And uh, Agent, or Agent Orange poisoned. So he is fully cared for by the VA, 100%, 100% disabled. And honestly, I know there's complaints and there's nothing on the other, and I'm not getting political at all, but VA's been pretty damn good to him. So, I don't know, side note. Um... Yeah, so now what I got to do is, on, is open up my bearing puller and pusher, same tool. Pull the bearing out. I'll show you again. Sorry, I lost my mojo. I was afraid Dad was not okay. Um, <laughs> so you're going to stick the bearing puller in here, and the rod goes in there and spreads out these sort of pedals of sort to grab hold of that. And then you drive that, pull that bearing out, then you drive in the fresh bearing. So you do want to change that bearing. You're not going to leave that if you do a cam job because... Believe it or not, uh, that bearing is is probably the weakest link in the cam chest of a Milwaukee 8. Uh, it's now that the oil pump's been fixed. So an upgraded needle bearing is a big deal and it's just going to improve your reliability. So now I got to pull that bearing, put in a new one, and then really think about do I want to go all in? That's that Screaming Eagle plate and pump I've had for a while. Or just put the stocker back in. The stocker's good in 23, honestly. So I have to make that decision. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Again, this will be in install videos, but there's the cam bearing puller tool I bought. You thumb screw it into the case. That goes through the bearing, and then this rod goes through that to spread out those sort of, you know, pedals, for like another word. Then just like any other bearing puller, you tighten this up while holding this, and it pulls the bearing out. I'll show you in a second. Here's the new bearing. Um, the brand, this is an American made bearing. It's made by, even though it says Koyo, it is made in the USA. So an American made bearing. You can see the number of needles. Hope you can see that in the video. That's the difference. The stock bearing will have, I don't know if it's half, but fewer needles in the bearing itself. So it's just not going to be as good as this one that's going into it. These are directional. The markings go out, the more round side goes in. So now what to do is, I'll show you the old bearing too take this tool off, flip it over, and then we'll drive the new bearing in. Another thing you need, you need assembly lube if you don't have that already. Um, so you'll need that to go ahead and coat that bearing real good before you drive it in, so. All right, moving on. There you go, that's the, whoop, there, focus. Focus, Folk both of us? Anyway, um, you can see the old bearing there. There's actually gaps between the needles, whereas on the new one, there isn't. So, all right. So now I gotta press this guy in, assembly lube, all that stuff, and then we'll be ready to go on from there and figure out if I wanna do the new oil pump or just put the stocker back in. It's no, this is no fun. Yeah, it's, I mean, I got it, I was nervous. There, there was a moment where there were issues. Um, you have to line the oil pump up and, uh, and, the, and the cam and stuff before you put the plate on which now you kind of get better perspective. Essentially, the reason why the plate is important 
Um, not only does it hold the oil pump and everything, but it holds the cam. That's really the job of it. Like the cam is just sitting in that needle bearing in the back. That's it. So the plate steadies that cam. It's kind of the really the load bearing, you know, structural piece. I, I mean, I knew that, but I, you know, when you see it, it's totally different. So that's in there. Um, but getting everything, getting everything lined up so the plate will go on was way more difficult than I thought it would be. And I kept going back going, I'm doing something wrong, I'm doing something wrong. So of course the crank has two flat spots, you gotta line that up. And then the, the end of it's got one flat spot. So you, you would think it'd be not that big of a deal, but it wasn't. And I'm like, it's, it would get so far and stop. And I'm like, what the hell? And I fiddle with it and fiddle with it. And, and I don't know what happened. O-rings are changed out, all that stuff is done. Those of you that are concerned about that. And I'm just like, nah, and all of a sudden it just went click. <laughs> it's like dr dropped right in there. Uh, I've got the chain back on, the sprockets back on, chain tensioner back on. Uh, oh, and I didn't use the stock stuff. I went with Screaming Eagle. So yeah, there's the stock and there's Screaming Eagle stuff. Now, somebody's gonna say, I wonder who makes it. I don't know. I don't know if Harley makes it or not. I have no, no clue, but um, they sent that to me actually a long time ago. When we did the 131 motor, the crate motor uh, has a stock oil pump and plate and the guys from the Screaming Eagle division, when they sent the motor, they sent me that thinking I would just do a, a cam, you know, change out the plate and pump. And I didn't know it until the motor was already swapped. And then we were already like, nah, like we were going through the boxes and we find that stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, hell, I'm not gonna do that now. <laughs> so we, we, I've been sitting on it for forever. Same one. So you have either a water cooled plate and pump set up or oil cooled, air cooled. Um, and that's the right one for this bike. So I'm like, well, let's just do that. So I threw that in there. Uh, again, I even got frustrated at one point, pulled it back out and said, well, I'll just put the stalker back in. And then I started to put the stalker back in and I was having the same problem with it and getting that stuff lined up. So I'm like, well, hell, I may as well put the good one in if I'm going to struggle either way. <laughs> so then I messed with it a little bit. And again, I was just right at my wits end and all of a sudden it just went click, just like went right in there nice and straight and smooth and perfect. So um, these are torqued properly. These are torqued properly. These are torqued properly. Everything's done right. Um, I got the new tappets here. So these are fueling. That's what uh, a tab sent forever ago. Fueling tappets uh, and SNS quickie push rods. So I'm using these. I already dropped in three out of four. I just got to drop this one in, straighten them up, and then put the SNS tappet cuffs on. But um, real simple stuff. I mean, if you don't know how this works, see that wheel right there rides on the camshaft. And as the cam spins around, the tappets go up and down, pushing the push rods, and the push rods push the valves open uh, against the valve springs and all that stuff. So it's a it's i i get why as a harley fanatic we get a lot of crap from jet bike riders metric bike riders um because you know it's archaic it's you know push rods da, 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 da. but you get torque that design works you know so um that's why they stick with it it's nostalgia there's actually a really great video um from Fortnite about why we buy harleys because even though he's an adv guy he also owns a dyna you know, he's a Harley guy also. So, all right, let me drop this last tappet in here. Uh, let me throw the cuffs on, tappet covers. There's new gaskets for that. So there's the ga also, the, the, when you buy it from Tab, they include the gaskets too. So I got new gaskets for the tappet covers, new gasket for the cam cover. I got to clean that thing up too because it looks like it's been buried in the bottom of a river for a week. Um, but we're getting there. And they put the exhaust back on and all that. And somebody's already thinking, what about tuning? Well, yeah, tuning's a thing, but I'm going to auto-tune it. I've never done that before with a stage, with a stage two. Uh, I mean, I have a power vision, so it's not like it's a basic one. It does a pretty damn good job. I even have over there somewhere a set of wide band O2 sensors, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to leave the stocker O2 sensors in there, run auto tune a bunch so that it's okay, and then I'll take it to a professional. Now, the wide band O2 sensors, I've heard from a lot of professionals, they don't need them. That really, a wide band se uh, setup is really for more for auto tuning. It's not. You know, a pro doesn't need that. They know, you know, what needs to be set, air fuel mixture and all that stuff. So, all right, let me keep buttoning things up and move forward. So, we're not done. Stopping for a minute for a refreshment. Put too much cherry juice in that. So, this is a mid-century old-fashioned. So, bourbon, uh, simple syrup, Angostura bitters, and an old mid-century. You throw a little cherry juice and some cherries in there. It's... It's really good, but it's it's mainly bourbon. But a couple things that I figured out while doing this stage two. Best practices. 
Best practice number one is be in your 20s or 30s. That's that's best practice number one. Best practice number two, weigh 100 pounds less than. Hi. 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 Get out of here and finish this. I love you. Love you too. Wife's checking in. Um, weigh like 100 and something pounds less than me. That's like step two. But 20s and 30s and don't be fat. There's, that's the first one. Last, the third one. Um, have a lift, an actual proper lift. So I'm using a scissor jack to get the rear end off, up off the ground. She had to turn the tire over, you know what I mean, rotate the motor. Same thing you would do if you had a lift. But if you don't have a lift, what you end up doing like me is sitting on the concrete floor. And it hurts, right? Hips and stuff are killing me. And, and anyway, I'm whining, but it is what it is. So the, the fiddliest part, besides, like I say, lining up those, those gears of the oil pump and all that stuff to get everything to come back together, is actually the fiddly ass tap it cover bolts. That sucks. I mean, it sounds stupid to say, but that's a pain in the ass to get in there, even when you got the right little hex key. I saw a mechanic that uses a swivel head ratchet to do it. I don't see where that would fit, but I mean, obviously he knows better than I do, but I'll show you where we are. It's, I took a picture earlier, it's probably the thumbnail and like, it's right here. Um, it seems like a crime to cover this stuff up. It's so pretty when they, you know, the tap it cuffs, uh, uh, and all that stuff and the, the, the pretty gold cam plate and all that stuff. But anyway, here's where we are. So we got the cover back on, everything bolted back together, tappet cuffs on, tappets are in, tappet covers are on. Now we just got to figure out these adjustable push rods. And I actually hadn't paid a whole lot of attention to that part yet. <laughs> Seems important, you know, but uh, I don't know if they, if they extend all the way to the end or if we do the old fashioned way, what you do is you, you would basically just, um, Put them in there and make sure they turn you know you adjust the top end on an old 350 chevy or whatever if you can turn the push rod uh lightly then you got her in like you you know tighten it to where you can't and then back it off a bit to where you can turn it i don't know if it's like that we'll find out here quickly but let me check some videos and i'll be back all right tis the next day there was a a, a scare everything's always making noises in here there was a scare last night, so something to be aware of that I hadn't seen it. Good for you. Thank you. Bitch talks back all the time. Anyway, um, so I had issues last night that I hadn't seen on any video, so something to be aware of. Essentially, uh, I put in the back push rods, got those nice and adjusted, went to do the front ones, put your fingers down in the tappet covers, start turning the back tires, and they wasn't moving. And I'm like, that's physically impossible if you know how this whole thing works cams rolling over in there which we know because we before we put the cam cover on you saw everything wasn't binding and chains turning everything's fine so you know the cams rolling over in there you know that the tappets are riding on the cam why isn't it moving <laughs> this is physically impossible otherwise it'd be bound up and what it was i called my buddy jason my, my friend jason lives you know 15 minutes from here he's a heavy equipment mechanic by trade it's what he does all day every day uh, he also happens to be greatest motorcycle mechanic I've ever met. He's going to watch this and get pissed because I said that. But, I mean, like, seriously, this the dude owns three shovel? No, two shovel heads and a pan head that I can think of right now. An Evo, a modern road glide. Like, I, I, you know, he's, he's owned everything and owns, I don't know, he owns almost as many bikes as I do, if not as many now, and, and works on all of them. Motor out, all the way down, that kind of stuff. Again, pan heads, shovel heads, Evos, twin cams, Milwaukee eights, all that stuff he does at home. All day he fixes bulldozers, then he comes home and works on Harleys. It's probably the same skill set, to be honest. But so he's done his own stage two and all that stuff, and again, has built torn motors all the way down and back up. So I figure he can help. I call him and he's like, Well, did you do this? Did you do I'm like, Yeah, yeah. And he's like, That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, that's not possible. He goes, Any chance the tappets just aren't all the way in there? I'm like, no, they, they should be. Like, I'm like shoving on them real hard with my finger going, no, no, that's that's it. And he's like, take that tappet cover off, loosen that tappet cuff, and did you do the 2000s clearance around the tappets? And I went, the what? And he was like, I think we found the problem. So essentially, those tappet cuffs are super close tolerance. Front one, or I'm sorry, the rear cylinder, I guess just magically it went together perfectly. Right, because those move freely. I checked those before I put the push rods in. Front ones, uh, they wasn't. The tappets just weren't all the way in there because they were slightly bound up in the cuffs themselves against the casing. 
because when I would loosen the cuff, took the cover off, loosen the cuff, you could just they just drop right down in there. So I'm like, what in the hell? So basically, lubed them up real good again, dropped them down in there, put the cuff back on, and used my feeler gauge at two thousandths all the way around both tappets, and then just held it like it ain't gonna move, tightened it down, and sure enough, they move freely. So what it was is the tappets were bound up in there, and the cuff was, I guess, microscopically tweaked, and that was binding them up. That's how close the tolerance is. Um, probably one reason to run stockers. <laughs> stock cuffs because i guarantee the tolerances are nothing like that on those plastic you know uh cuffs that and they'll probably give a little bit right what is going on with the camera right now i know i'm ugly but good lord little bastard just looked away it was just like nah i don't want to look at you anymore and just uh, it's an issue i know so all right so what i'm going to do now is now those are working right i'm going to put the front push rods in which i'll put a link in the description to a video i found that's just on the push rods because that is a thing essentially uh, and I can't remember what I said yesterday in the video, but just like an old Chevy, you put them in there and you extend them out until you can, you know, they're touching and they're snug. There's no up and down movement and you can still rotate them a little bit. Uh, and then there's some that say like, if you want to be exact about it, as soon as they're touching and there's no up and down slack, I think it's two and a half turns and then lock them down. Um, basically what I did on this. So, uh, let me put the front ones in and then it's a matter of putting the exhaust back on, I guess. All right. And the and the spark plugs and the floorboard. Yeah, air cleaner. We'll do all that and see if it runs. <laughs> I'm freaking terrified. All right. Pipes are back on. All fit fine, snugged up. Haven't put the air cleaner on yet because it's not necessary to fire. Haven't put on the you know floorboard, not necessary to fire it. What is necessary that I forgot is I took two spark plugs out, so I gotta go put those back in. So we're close. We're real close to seeing whether or not I've completely destroyed this motorcycle or made a nice upgrade. I think we have a, I think we have a 50-50 chance, you know, so let's see. So, top 50 scariest moments of my life. Bike is put back together. Spark plugs are back in. Bike is in neutral. Wires popped out funny from the tuner. Gotta fix that now. Anyway, so... <laughs> let's see I mean I guess they just got to remember I mean after all it's, it's not my bike <laughs> Alan's yelling things at the TV right now let me move this bucket of oil out of the way before that potentially comes an issue pray for me three two swear to God first start well that's a thing Ah, I wonder what that's all about. Well, okay, hang on. Well, I feel like I've got to have those valves not set right because it's there's nothing binding. It's turning over just fine. And no, I'm not damaging the motor by doing that if that's what it is. If the valves are just not opening and closing all the way then it's not gonna fire, it's not getting fuel, it's not, you know, that sort of stuff. But I'm not hurting anything. So I've turned it over and I sent a video of it turning over um, to Jason and Jason will get back to me. He's done this before and knows how to do it on all different generations. So it might just be that I didn't maybe have that on the bottom lobe all the way. And so when I adjusted it, it you know, it just didn't, they're not opening all the way. It's something that's, I almost bet that's what it is, that I've got the valves done wrong. This is actually, Full disclosure the only part of the install that i was afraid of i wasn't really afraid of pulling the pump and all that sort of stuff that's that's if you do it right it'll be easy this is a little bit of art <laughs> as much as it is science or being able to do mechanical wizardry so i'm waiting for a message from jason or maybe he'll stop by after work tonight or something like that and knock this out because if that's what it is i can leave the exhaust on all that sort of stuff you can just pop the covers off and adjust those with the the pipe still on it and all that stuff not a big deal so Stay tuned. Day something. I don't know. It might be day three. Well, it's done. We'll fire it here in a minute. But I'll just say that this uh, DIY stage two cam install on this bike is a journey of self discovery and reflection. Um, I've learned a lot about myself, you know. Uh, a man's got to know his limitations and all that. 
And to quote John Wayne, life is hard. It's a lot harder when you're stupid. That's that's a thing. So when I first started this, I told my dad, you know, old man monkey from the channel, I sent a picture on Facebook, I think it was, of the cam chest with the plate in there. And I get this message from dad going, son, what are you doing? And I said, I'm doing my own stage two install. He goes, on what motorcycle? And I'm like, Alan's Roguelite ST. He's like the 2023 one, the brand new one. I'm like, yeah. He's like, why? And I'm like, because I don't want to bother Jason. So I have a good friend, Jason, who lives only about 15 minutes away from me. Jason is a real man. Jason is a uh, licensed, trained, educated mechanic who's done this for decades and decades, not on motorcycles, on everything. Like, used to rebuild heavy truck transmissions, rebuilds engines, or does all that stuff. Hit by his profession today, as he is a mobile shop for a massive construction company, he goes out in the mud and fixes bulldozers. I mean, like he he can fix anything. Master mechanic, and I didn't want to bother him. He's got a lift. You may have heard me talk about Jason before. He's got a couple pan heads. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's got a pan head and multiple shovel heads. And I didn't want to bother him. I just didn't want to bug him. I don't want to be that guy. I don't ever want to be a pain in anybody's ass. Well. When she wouldn't fire, I texted Jason, and he's like, all right, man, I'm on my way. I get off at 5 o'clock. I'll be right there. So this man gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning, goes and works all day, and then comes to my house, and he's here until 9 o'clock last night. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Friday? It's Friday. And the dude's, like, just doing everything. He's, like, checking the push rods. Like, all right, this, something doesn't make sense. And all of a sudden, he's got me turning the motor over and feeling for overlap, and then he's looking down the cylinder on the other side through where the spark plug is, and he goes... What in the hell is going on? And he starts getting like flustered. And Jason doesn't fluster. And he was like, the pistons are, why are they down? They're supposed to be. And he just looks at me and goes, you set the timing on this when you put the cam chest back together, didn't you? And I just went, you know that scene in movies where the camera flies in the person's face and it's like, <gasps> that's, that's, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I don't think I did. And he was like, what do you mean you didn't set the timing when you put the damn motor back together? I'm like, I, I do 12 things at once. I go inside and do a work call. I come out here and do something. I go back in and work more, work, 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 come out here. And I'm always doing 17 things at once. I am impatient. Problem number one, I have many character flaws. That's a big one. I am impatient. I get flustered and I rush. That's what I do in pretty much all things. And when I put the cam chest back together, I didn't line the timing up. I just like stuck it back together. So you had valves opening and closing when thankfully it was so far off that the bike didn't fire. Because if it had fired, we could have had serious damage. We could have had bent valve. We could have had all kinds of stuff. All kinds of terrible things could have happened to that motor. So he was like, all right, man, take it all back apart and do that and let me know how it goes. So this morning I get up, do a bunch of work for the real job, come out here and I tear all the way back in, exhaust back off, back in the cam chest. And yeah, timing was way off. I don't know I don't know what I was thinking, I just wasn't. So set it all right. Actually did almost a full disassembly again because then I was like, all right, whatever, what else was I not patient with? Because again, dealerships as they're doing stage two, stage three, stage fours, they, they are on an hour basis. They're trying to get it done within time, but still collect all the hours. It's a business, right? That's how they do things. Jason is not a by the hour guy. His job is to go out and make something that was not running run perfectly. So he is an absolute perfectionist. So when he was helping me work on this and set the tappets and the cuffs, because they were a little sticky, we did actually have a tappet cuff that had a, a bit of a, a heavy amount of anodization on one side, so it was sticky. So that man's in there just perfectly filing the inside of that tappet tap cuff to make it smooth. He is beyond a perfectionist. He made me go into every single threaded hole. I said it, go ahead and laugh and run out every single one of those. Remove any leftover debris or, or thread lock or anything in there. Just you know, clean out all the threads and then break cleaning all of it and compressed air, blow it out. I mean, that's just the way he does things. It's to a level that you don't see in any of these videos. Nobody, and I'm not saying they're not doing it and they're not great mechanics or anything, but none of these videos did I see them doing any of the stuff I saw Jason doing where he says, that's how you build in reliability. That's how you make a bike bulletproof is when you go that far into the details and make sure every single thing is perfect. Every single thing is torqued correctly. Every single thing has perfectly clean threads and will never be a problem there. Nothing will crack. Cause he's like, if you've got too much uh, um, thread lock on the bolt and leftover thread lock in the hole and you drive that sucker down and torque it, that is, a, is stress, extra stress and you can crack the case. It's like that's just, 
expert mechanic stuff, right? That I certainly don't have. And it seemed that I wasn't seeing that done online either. So it's it's a thing, right? So anyway, I, I used uh, Jason's level of obsession, did all that, put it all back together, and she runs. So who knew? You just have to time a motor correctly before it'll fire. Here you go, I'll show you. floorboard missing got to put that on i gotta put the air cleaner back on too but i wanted to get this to where it would run and prove that it's okay i gotta tune it again i'm gonna run a bunch of auto tunes and in the meantime check and see if anyone out there has a zippers 472 map for a 117 that i can start over again that would be best if we can find a better base map and then auto tune from that that's not going to be permanently what we do eventually i think i'm gonna take it to rhino motorsports up in uh he's around orlando i think tampa ish and uh and let him tune it. Uh, no more changes to the motor, I don't think. So we're gonna build this all the way. We're gonna go potentially make, I know we're gonna do new, new cartridges in the forks and new shocks, maybe even do different inverted forks, haven't decided what the budget is on that stuff. And then the knee cut tank, the full carbon fiber body, like this thing's gonna go all the way. It's just gonna be over time, not overnight. So, but a 117 with a nice big cam in it and a good tune, it's a good running motor. I mean, it, to me, it's this will probably dyno 120 something horsepower 122 121 123 i don't know this pipe's pretty good so maybe even better and then torque i don't know 130 something like that's probably what it'll pull down for real a conservative dyno not one of these dudes that like inflates numbers and all that sort of crap that's probably the real number on it maybe maybe not even 120 horsepower maybe 119 i don't know i don't really care but dyno will be fine on it i'm sure so now i'm going to put on the Floorboard. I'm gonna put on the air cleaner. I'm gonna get it down off this scissor jack clean up all these tools because I have destroyed my garage Again as I always do but the whole point of this video Was to prove that you can do it and you can I just don't know what I just kicked you can but will I do it again? I don't know to be honest. I mean, I guess it'll depend on a million variables Did I enjoy it? I enjoyed today once I knew what was wrong and now that I've done everything wrong that can be wrong I probably could tackle it again. Do I want to? No, I don't, you know? I did it because that bike, no bullshit, isn't mine. So I, I honestly was like, well, if you're gonna experiment one, experiment on one that you don't have to rely on every day, even though that is my everyday rider now. So there's that. The old man wants a cam in his trike. I think I'm gonna have Jason do that. And FJ, you know, not for free, of course. I don't expect anyone to work for free, but have maybe Jason do it, you know, on Dad's trike and sit and watch and document that to see how an absolute meticulous professional would do it when time is not an, an issue. You know, you're, you're not trying to get the job done in six hours. You're trying to get the job done perfectly. And that's how he does everything. So, all right, that's it. Comment down below. I want to know your questions. So again, the build, this is every single part that went in that bike. That is a Zippers Redshift 472 cam. They have other variations, that's a 472. The cam plate and pump are the Screaming Eagle one, the one that's gold that you can buy off their website, goldish orange. So that's a Screaming Eagle plate and pump. The lifters are uh, fueling hydraulic tappets. The push rods are SNS quickies. The tappet cuffs are SNS. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, the, the gasket kit we used was again this was all provided by tab performance so thanks again to the comedic so the gaskets are a comedic kit again sns quickie push rods i had to buy some other stuff on on the amazon i had to buy a bearing puller i had to buy um you know the, this the uh the block that holds the cam the, the cam sprocket and uh, uh crank sprocket in place so you can take the bolts off that's a plastic piece a couple dollars but that's the whole parts list I'm trying to think. It's going to be a little low on oil now, so i got to fill that back up. But there you have it, and there you are. Next step's probably suspension on this guy. And then just ride the hell out of it for a while. So let me know what you think. I'm rather shocked. I mean, I really kind of feel like this guy. Who put this thing together? Me. That's who. Who do I trust? Me. 
I'm sure you saw that online before, but I feel like that guy right now. I feel like I could take on the world, although I don't want everyone to do it again. <laughs> so, we got a stage tune on the ST. Love you all to death. Thanks for watching. We'll talk real soon. Bye.